Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day is a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 70th week. Sweeney clear the floor, Katie bar the door, Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we got this show on the road. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out our written show notes on my blog and check out all of our uh, publications and books while you're there. And yes, it's all just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And remember, you can also phone 816-256-3360 and leave your comments or your family search or your song or recitation on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, Shaughnessy is the name of the week, 17million.com is today's webpage, searching for Shea, Milling, Cleary, Carling, and Lawless. And what's this about a bird flying into stores in Tullamore? County Down Genealogy is the book of the week. And when is Gregory Peck's daughter coming to County Cary? And lastly, Genealogy Bank has one billion names and counting. Notes this week. Well, we're still recovering from uh, exhibiting and speaking over the last month or so. Last week was the National Genealogical Society Conference, and that was relatively small compared to the big outdoor Irish festivals we go to all the time. But it's always very interesting to see what is developing in the world of genealogy. And of course, that's genealogy for all nationalities. Uh, Very interesting. I met with several people, as we noted last week, and right across from the aisle from me was Genealogy Bank. So I thought I'd bring you a piece of the conference uh, right here today and let you listen to an interview I had with them. So here it is now, live from the Hyatt downtown. Listen in. Welcome home. Every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe and we found another person here at the National Genealogical Society Conference in Kansas City that might be able to offer some help for all uh, us Irish researchers out there. There's so much data that we can't make sense of it, and so it's nice to hear somebody explain it in everyday English. And I've got a booth here, and right across from me was Jenny, and I think Jenny's from Vermont, but she represents uh, Genealogy Bank and News Bank, I also see on the sign. But could you tell you tell us what that's what's that all about? Okay, our website is genealogybank.com, and the parent company is NewsBank. Um, we're here for an e-commerce product that people can go online and do a search by last name and first name. We have different products within it, like historical newspapers, which would cover Boston, New York, um, big areas that have the Irish roots. We go back into the colonial times even, before there were states, though we do have information that covers all of the 50 states. So people could actually type in the name of their grandfather, say, and hope that something would come up in one of your resources. Correct. And they are also able to narrow it down by state and do a search by a particular newspaper. Well, now, what, uh, what items? I guess any newspaper that was in uh, Boston, New York, Chicago, uh, those areas, they'd be of interest to the Irish. Do you have anything uh, else in particular that you think of? Um, regarding particular newspapers, yes. um, I do know I, if somebody were looking for the Chicago Tribune, unfortunately that is not included, but we do have a lot of other um, Illinois newspapers. Our coverage is pretty vast in that area. Um, we also, Boston is probably our most coveraged area. And uh, New York, we have a lot of things that came in from Ellis Island. Well, and how far back does that go? Boston goes back right into the 1600s. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, it's not only good for looking for an individual, it's also good for looking up subjects, like if you were doing a report on an Irish subject or or making a speech on an Irish subject, or you're just curious about 
what the St. Patrick's Day uh, parade, how it was reported on a uh, hundred years ago in a town. That'd be interesting. Uh, uh, now, how if somebody wanted to use your services, uh, how would they go about doing it? Well, they can go to genealogybank.com on the website, and though the page comes up with the last name, first name search, there are advanced search options. You can put in the last name spot, St. Patrick's Day Parade even, and it'll search for that information. Well, that's good. Now, now, how about what? What about cost? You know, sometimes folks want four or five hundred dollars to do all this fancy research. What What is it going to cost uh, one of my members if they wanted to go in there and look today and just type it in? Well, right now we're running a nine ninety five trial special that lasts for thirty days. If they like the product and enjoy it, they can renew into one or two options. We have a sixty nine ninety five package, and we have a nineteen ninety five that runs monthly, and both af- offer unlimited access. Now, I noticed on your sign over there it said one billion names. Man, that's a lot of names. Now, are you going to stop at a billion or are you shooting for a trillion? <laughs> We're shooting for a trillion. We add new information daily. Ooh, that's good. And, uh, okay, one more time before we sign off, exactly where do they go and exactly what does it cost? You can go to www.genealogybank.com, and we have a nine ninety five trial package for one month or 30 days. Well, great. That's been a lot of fun. Oh, I can see the the crowds lining up again at your booth. I don't know what we're going to do. You better get over. They're starting to throw angry glances over here because I've got you captured in the corner doing a little recording. So you better get back there. And uh, from Kansas City, this is Michael Laughlin at the Irish Roots Cafe signing off. Thank you very much. Bye. Great. Great. Well, thanks a lot for that interview. Uh, We always like to hear what the latest things are and, uh, That newspaper research is going to really turn into something as we start getting all that database online. Uh, But now it's time we move on to, well, you should remember that I've got three broadcasts out there and they're free and you can listen to all of them. And if you like the Irish, you're sure going to like some of them. And this one, of course, is the Irish Families Worldwide uh, broadcast. I also have a broadcast on Irish song and recitation and another one on the Irish in America. We've done uh, uh, quite a few episodes on Missouri, and I'm preparing episodes on uh, Georgia right now. So be sure to stay tuned for those. And you can get them anytime, either on iTunes or uh, on my web t- page at irishroots.com. But now it is time to move on to the book of the month. County Down, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History is the book of the month. And here's a sample extract from the book, as we usually do it. And these, this is the 19th century uh, uh, birth index, really the most common names in County Down, County Down itself. And what are those names? Well, you got names like Thompson, and you can have a P in that, or the P can be left out. Uh, Smith, Campbell, and the same thing with Campbell, you can put that P in or take it out. Uh, Patterson, Martin, Wilson, Graham, Johnston. You can take the T out of Johnston and just make it Johnson. Uh, It just depends on who wrote down those records sometimes. Murray, Brown, Robinson, Hamilton, Bell, Scott, and Boyd. Those are the top-ranked surnames, so... And that's just a few of them that are in the county, but that lets you know uh, who some of the main families were back then. Now let's move on to the map of the four masters. That's a map that shows, it's the most extensive map I've ever seen on uh, uh, really Irish families in Ireland that was put together by McDermott in uh, the Canellan translation of the four masters. And what kind of names we've got here? Gosh, I got so many names I can't even include them all that are on the map, and that's a rare thing. But we've got names like Audley, and of course, De Burgo, who was an Earl, Copeland, De Courcy, Fitzsimmon, uh, Jordan, De Lacey, who was an Earl, McCartan, who was a Lord, McGinnis, who was a Prince, McGilmore, McGowan, Mandeville, Martin, Colgan, Coulteran, Mc- O'Connell, McRory, who was a Chief, O'Cormac, O'Don Levy, Flory, Garvey, Hanvey, Hoey, Kelly, Largnan, Lawler, Lowry, who was a she- or Lowry or Lowry, who was a chief, Longan, Lynch, Mackin, Mahan, Moore, Moran, huh, Moran, O'Neill, who was a lord, Rogan, Rooney, Lapore, Riddle, Russell, Savage, Smith, Stanton, and White. 
and that's the end of the extract from the four masters but that just gives you an idea of the wide range of families that were in old county down and there sure was a lot a lot of activity in that county that's to be sure uh coming up later this episode i thought i'd remind you birds are attacking shoppers in tullamore why in the world would that be well find out that later and find out if there's a solution to the problem right now it's time to raise our eyes skyward once again give thanks and ask for help Here is today's uh, member Irish family search list. New member Catherine Murtaugh of Malone, New York. She's looking for John Shea, who married Joanna Long in Ireland, and both were born in the 1820s, and they were in Knoxville, Tennessee uh, in 1858 or 1859, and he died in Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. And that was in 1893. Uh, she also th thinks that John worked on a railroad. And uh, uh, she has some theories on that. But if you think you can help her out, I'll be glad to put you all in touch. Just uh, drop me a line at my email address or click on the contact link on our webpage. And uh, Catherine, your Keating's History of Ireland three-volume set has shipped. And uh, I hope it's gotten there already. If not, it's very close to arriving. New member Jackie Carroll of Winter, Florida. Uh, she's researching Captain Hugh Milling from Drumbo County Down, and she hasn't been able to find out just when he left Ireland. He settled in North Carolina and was a captain in the Revolutionary War and died in North Carolina. Number three, new member Ellen Cleary Ward of Drum Moyne, Australia is looking for Robert Clary, born June 4th, 1860, uh, in Enniscorthy, Ballyvake, Edermine Parish. Number four, new member Margaret Moore of Kingston, Washington. In 1835, James Carling and his wife Mary Doherty Carling immigrated to Grenville, Quebec, in Canada. And they brought Terence, who was just uh, age three, and Catherine, who was just a wee age of one, and Margaret Shanahan, or Shannon, James' mother. And she says that from Nefsi's book, that's the surnames in Ireland, uh, the Carling name shows up in Derry, but I do not know where to start. Well, of course, if, if you're not sure it's Derry, you have to start in the American records to find the Irish county. That's always the toughest part of the battle. you got to jump the water. And then you divide it up in the county. You start with the uh, county heritage centers in each county. And you check out the libraries in each county. Uh, and you might even hire a researcher to do a very specific task. And, of course, 7 million records just went online. Uh, birth, death, and marriage records for Ireland. I had that link a couple of weeks back on the web page. So all kinds of things are happening. It's just a matter of finding the time to do it. And what do we have here? Number five, the last one we've got time for today. New member, Celeste Hargis of Lufkin, Texas. She's trying to locate any lawless in Irish ancestry that she has. And she also has an interest in the surnames Burns. Lawless whether was her father's name and Burns was his mother's surname. Okay, anybody can help Celeste out. Be sure to let me know. I'll get you all in touch. And that reminds me to say thanks to all of our members, each and every one of you, because without you, these podcasts would not be possible. Wouldn't be able to set aside the time to do it, that's for sure. Well, now it's time we move on to the Irish family name of the day. And the name of the day is O'Shaughnessy. Today's family history is in honor of member Michael O'Shaughnessy of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Searching for information on his great-grandparents, John O'Shaughnessy, who came to Milford, Massachusetts in 1849, and James O'Shaughnessy, who came to Milford in 1848. And that's right around the worst of the famine, so if they came over then, they knew what they were leaving, and they were probably hoping on something a lot better that they were heading to. Now, related spellings of the name, 
We take those, most of those from the master guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. And a name like Shaughnessy, well, anybody that has a name that ends in a Y sort of can take heed from this. That name can end as I-S-Y or E-S-Y or S-S-E-Y uh, or just S-S-Y. You can change those, those letters all around. It's the sound of the, na- the, the letter that is important. It can end with an E or an I. Uh, it just, it doesn't matter. So just keep your mind open when you're searching those records and, uh, particularly when somebody else was writing down the name and those are in variant spelling groups, 1863, 1684, and 3120. Now let's take a little bit, of, uh, of a history look at the name O'Shaughnessy in Ireland. And O'Shaughnessy is found in Galway and that's where you find O'Shaughnessy country for sure. It's in the barony of Kiltartan, and you can also find them in nearby areas in Limerick and Galway. And uh, you can still find most of the family roots there today. Now, the O'Shaughnessys were of the same descent as the O'Hine family, and uh, they held the mountainous area near the borders of Galway and Clare. Keating's history gives us uh, their district as a large area in the barony of Kiltartan. And it said they took command of the area over the O'K Hills and Eau Claries. And those lands became known as O'Shaughnessy's Country. Now, they served as chiefs before the 12th century Norman invasions, and they were anciently of the southern High Fiacra, uh, descended from King Dathai, the last pagan king of Ireland. And their lands also included the Diocese of Kilmacdu. The O prefix is often found in the name. In 1890, we find 30 O Shaughnessy births are found in Limerick and 41 are found as simply Shaughnessy in Galway. Now, O'Hart tells us uh, that in 1843, there was a barber in Galway. Can you imagine going and get your hair cut by the head of this once noble family? That would have been the O Shaughnessy. Of course, by then, there wasn't much left but the title for the name. But O'Hart describes that, and you can find more about that in uh, a book uh, by John O'Donovan, which was Tribes and Customs of the High Fiacra. A lot of little nooks and crannies in that High Fiacra book by O'Donovan. Same thing about the High Many book that he wrote. He was a very learned man. Uh, You can also find several of uh, the O'Shaughnessy's in the Irish Brigades of France. Uh, Roebuck O'Shaughnessy, who was chief of the name in 17, who died in 1754, tried to recover the family's property, and his son Joseph even converted to the established church for the same purpose. Uh, you can also find entries for the name in King James Irish Army List. So there's no lack of information for the Shaughnessy family, that's for sure. And we've taken a lot of this information from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. Now, if we take a look uh, about the Irish family coats of arms, I didn't find many arms in, in, in the ancient documents that were pre before the coming of the Irish uh, Free State. Uh, that's because the O'Shaughnessy's were probably fighting the power structure at that time. But they are listed uh, uh, by the Chief Herald once the Free State was formed. And you'll see there's, it looks like a castle in the middle and a lion on each side of that castle rearing up next to it. So they were a a kingly family, it would appear. And if we go to the Freemaster Index search of Irish names on our webpage, we find 76 entries for the name, 76 sources. And that includes things like we've already mentioned, the birth index of Ireland and our, uh, our hardbound uh, families of Ireland books, the families of County Kerry, families of County Clare, Galway, and Limerick, they're in all those books, as you might expect. And the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters includes entries on O'Shaughnessy's history and the Gort O'Shaughnessy's, that would be a Galway branch, and Lord O'Shaughnessy is also mentioned by the Four Masters. And there's a few more. Uh... Number six, we also have Shaughnessy mentioned in uh, the book I've just released uh, earlier this year, Missouri Irish. So we're finding them everywhere. Uh, And of course, we also mentioned tribes, customs, and genealogies of the High Fiacra. 
and that actually has a uh, pedigree of Shaughnessy in there, plus a lot of history as well. So those are just some ideas for future research. You can either uh, pick those books up at a library or order them. Uh, I've also got them on Amazon.com, got them on our webpage. It's always kind to order from the webpage. Helps us out. Well, now it's time to move on to the website of the week. And that would be 70million.com. That's a website where they're looking for the 70 million people in the world who have Irish heritage. And it's, it's set up in order to map and connect us all together. And it says, we need your help. And they say, add yourself to the map and profile your Irish heritage and tell your friends about the project. So if you want to try to get linked up in this 17, 70 million people database, uh, that could be fun. You might want to try them out. That's 70million.com. Well, we've got time for a, a few little curious news and notes. Hey, you know, we talked a few shows, shows back uh, and it, we said that Father Flanagan of Boy Towns, uh, Boys Town, he looked more like Gregory Peck than, than Spencer Tracy, who actually played Father Flanagan in the movie. Well, Cecilia Peck, the daughter of Gregory Peck, is going to speak at uh, the Dingle Film Festival this year in County Kerry in September. It seems that Gregory Peck's grandmother was Catherine Ash, who came from Dingle, County Kerry. So, by golly, there was a direct little uh, connection there with Ireland. And number two, here's another strange one. Birds have been flying, swooping right down into the Tesco store in Tullamore County, Offaly in Ireland. And they swoop inside the door and they're swiping items from customers' shopping carts. So they've come up with a plan and they put up some fake hawks and pigeons and uh, made some fake bird sounds being broadcast there on the radio waves. And uh, it seems like it's keeping the birds away, at least at last report they were. We'll see if those birds develop a uh, sense of intelligence about the matter and just fly right on by those fake, uh, fake mock-ups. But we're glad to hear that it's working for now. And what's this? Here's one last little curious news and note. Patrick Ryan and Tom O'Neill are renovating Kilahara Castle near Thurles County Tipperary. And no, it's not going to be another tourist banquet hall, but rather it's going to be a private residence, they say. At least that's what reports say. So if you happen to be a Ryan or an O'Neill, I'm sure you could just stop by and say, do you mind if we spend the night, cousin? And they'll invite you right on in the castle once it's renovated. Or so we'd all like to think. Well, got time just to mention two little events here, and then we'll sign off for the day. We're still sort of catching up from this busy month. Uh, you might remember Brown's Irish Market. They were the oldest Irish-run business in North America, and they had their 120th anniversary celebration last year, and we were there, and it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun, in fact, that they're going to do it again. No, they're not going to do their 120th anniversary again. They're going to do their 121st anniversary. And uh, I think I'm going to show up to do some interviews there again this year, maybe with some musicians, maybe with some family history folks. We'll just see. Or maybe I'll just sit down and take it all in. Uh, number two, and the last entry for the day, the Dublin, Ohio Irish Festival is August 1, 2, 3 this year. And I think we've been there at the genealogy tent for 10 years or so now. Hope to see you again there this year. Well, remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send a note by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Mick the Bridge. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Oh,